Hi, everyone. It's Chris Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com, thechrisvossshow.com. Review all the latest in social media and technology. This is from one of our uh, phone companies that sends us phones. We, of course, get phones from all the major companies. This is from Sprint at Sprint.com. That's Sprint.com. This is the Motorola Photon Q. It's a 4G LTE phone, and uh, it's got a lot of stuff packed into it and uh, so let's get into the details of it be sure to subscribe of course to the Chris Voss show and our YouTube channel so you can see all the great and latest reviews and phones that are out there on the marketplace as we are always comparing them so this is from Sprint and uh, it's a pretty popular phone on their website uh, it's got size dimensions of 4.98 inches in height 2.8 six in width and 0.54 in thickness runs six ounces in weight it has a talk time of 7.5 hours a standby is 220 hours max 1785 milliamp hours lithium battery uh, it's got an LCD color TFT TFD resolution of 540 by 960 pixels the uh, screen size is a 4.3 diagonal colors are 16.7 million 24 bit with color boost. Uh, comes out of the box with Android version 4.0. The processor is 1.5 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon dual core. It's got 8 gigabytes of internal storage for memory and uh, 1 gigabyte of RAM. And uh, it also has upgradable memory where you can take and uh, upgrade the memory with a micro SD card up to 32 gigabytes. So that's always good where you can take and add that on. The back camera is uh, got a 8 megapixel uh, camera on the back. Front facing camera is uh, 10, or I'm sorry, 1.3 720 HD camera on the front. And of course, the back is 1080p HD resolution with 30 frames per second. So it's definitely got some uh, good build to it and some Motorola device. And of course, I believe Google owns Motorola at this point. So uh, let's take a look at the device and what it's got on it. Um, you can see here that we've got a finite swipe system as we go through it. You've got your speaker on the front for making calls. So you've got your front facing camera, back button, home button, and recent apps button for your capacitive touch screen. Um, so you've got a left to right swipe. Looks like, actually, I'm, excuse me, oh, it looks like we just have a, a left to right swipe, and that's pretty much it. There's no right to left so this is what we have is uh, three things uh, what we probably have not done is added more blank pages so I'm sure as you add more there will be more available so we'll go ahead and do some of that but it looks like it is a finite swipe system and uh, should lock us into how many we can take and make so yeah we're still stuck at the finite system. So you get an idea as to how that works. Now, let's take a look at what's running on this device when it comes to um, its latest update. Some of these phones are updated to 4.04. .04. Uh, this one, yes, has been updated to Android version 4.04. .04. So this has been updated from out of the box, which is originally 4.04. .04. Um, it's got uh, your normal screen. Uh, we've reviewed a number of Motorola. Has always been impressed with their products. Um, you have, of course, your widget system. You can do live wallpapers if you so choose on here, and uh, gallery setup, all that good stuff. Um, and they make great phones. They make beautiful phones, great screens, great colors, and of course, we're going to get a chance to review them. Uh, this uh, you can see here the drop-down notification menu, how it works, and all that good stuff. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Now, it one thing it is an aspect about this phone is it has a slide-out keyboard. So it has a keyboard that slides out. You've got a five-row keyboard that's here. You've got some microphone holes here and here. Uh, it is pretty nice where that I like it where it's got a nice text, uh, a text textile uh, gripping area here where you can easily grip. Uh, the device and the buttons are very responsive and feel really good. Uh, it's a good solid build feel to the buttons. They don't feel cheap or weak in any way, shape, or form. Uh, and that's especially important because you're probably going to be banging on this a lot when you get it. So I like the 
the feel of this here on the device and how it it uh, gives you the ability to grip the device very well. I'm doing this with one hand and at five ounces it's a little heavy. So uh, it holds up really well. You can see the back of the device we'll get into. Um, but yeah, the features of having the uh, uh, keys the way they are are important. As you can see it's backlit so at night you'll be able to see the keys which is also important. So let's flip the device over. We'll take a look at the back. On the back of the device what we're seeing is it's got you can see the power button protruding here and of course the earphone button protruding back does not remove uh, you can see here that we've got an 8 megapixel HD 1080p notation above the camera uh, we have the camera eye here we have the lamp flash here and a pretty good sized speaker down here it's got a nice back to it uh, that's uh, kind of a plastic protective back it feels like a solid build when it comes down to it Okay, so here you can see we have the top of the Motorola, and what we've got is we've got a power button right here, an earphone jack right here. Down the uh, left side, we've got a sync area for the sync and charge. We also have the HDMI output button. This is really cool where you can plug this into a TV and be able to uh, look, watch your Motorola uh, screens on the TV, which is very nice. Uh, nothing much here to see on the bottom of the device that you can see. Uh, upon the right hand side of the device we have a shutter button of course we have volume buttons up and down those are individual buttons and then we also have a place for the micro SD card for, to expand the memory so you have a place to slide that puppy right in there and away you go we'll go ahead and, and do that and of course there we are back to the top one interesting aspect about this uh, Motorola phone is uh, it claims to be environmentally friendly it's a green machine and uh, basically what it is is platinum certified that this phone meets the highest level of environmental performance established by the UL environment and uh, basically it's designed to be more environmental friendly even the box that it comes in appears to be uh, possibly recycled material and uh, it even has a smart actions app that adjust your phone settings to your needs so you can automate everyday tasks and save battery power. So it's uh, kind of angled and designed towards uh, being an environmentally friendly phone. Okay, so here we can see the Geekbench 2 score. This is the app for Geekbench. Um, and it scored really well. 1410 is the score we're getting out of it. So it's a fast processor for this uh, device. It's got an energy rating of 882, floating point of 2238, memory. 1288 and 608 for the stream. Uh, I'll page down here through some of the details. You're welcome to stop the video if you so choose. One of the great things about uh, these apps is they're pretty much for free in the Android store and so you can take and download them on your device and see how your device compares to these and it'll give you a good idea if you're looking to purchase these devices uh, as to how much better they might do for you. Okay, so here you can see the uh, colors we're getting off the screen display. Uh, really good, strong on the green. You can see the light blue coming in here uh, and the dark blues, well, light blue, dark blue, whatever you want to call it, uh, purple, reds, yellows, all coming in really well. It's got a good screen on it. Okay, so here we've run the CF Bench Pro version 1.2 on this uh, and uh, you, you can see how it did. Uh, it did pretty well. Let's take a look. You can see some of the different breakdowns of the tests that it did and what the results were. And uh, you can, of course, pause this video just any time if you want to get more details on it. The overall score is really good, 93.71, and uh, it scored pretty well. You can see here, scored up around the areas of the Galaxy S2, the HTC One X, and the Galaxy S3 came in slightly above it. Okay, so now here we can see the uh, Motorola scores on the uh, device. You've got uh, 6371, which is a good score. Uh, came in uh, CPU 3070, 1488 for the GPU and the RAM 1052, and the uh, IO is 761. So uh, there's your score on the Antutu benchmarking scoring app. Okay, so now here we can see the app turned in a pretty fast time, 22.206 seconds in the billion counter test. This tests how fast the device can count to a billion. 
We're doing the quadrant standard test with the device, and it scored exceptionally well, almost as high as the HTC One X. Uh, it scored a 4516, which is really good. You can see it outperformed a lot of other phones. Uh, you can see the CPU came in at 7558, memory 6489, I was 5449, 2D 980, and 3D2104. Okay, so here using the benchmarking app, you can see here that we came in really good with 7,227. I think the, the uh, type's a little hard to see, but you can see here it ranked up in the top area of other devices that are out there. It uh, looks like in the top five. So uh, it did very well. Okay, so now we can see here, these are the Passmark performance tests. Uh, came in with a 1959 score, which is good for the system. Uh, as we page down here, you can see the CPU test came with a strong score of 4816. This test, 2782. Uh, memory test, 2223. 2D graphics test, 2383. And the 3D graphics test of 617. Now this is a GPS test. This tests how well the device can figure out where it's on the planet and how many satellites it tends to pick up. You can see here it's picked up 22 satellites. It's got 16 it's using to come with an accuracy of 10 feet, which most uh, cell phones do. So that's good. Okay, so here we can see the GL benchmark. This measures frames per second. Uh, you can see that we're using the 2.5.1 version. Uh, the uh, 2.5 Egypt HD came in at 29.93 frames at 26 frames per second. The off screen came in at uh, 15, 10 frames at 13 frames per second. Okay, so now here we can see the Velamo scores uh, and how well it scored. This does a lot of different scoring with the uh, JavaScript, uh, HTML5, etc., etc. So you can see here that we scored 1516, which is really good, and 488 for the Velamo scores. Okay, so here we have the KFS benchmark test. This basically benches uh, friend frames per second. We came in at 38.063. Okay, so here you can see we're using the SQL RL benchmark SQL Lite performance test. It says several different things with the device, uh, and the score came out to be overall 27.49 seconds, which is really good. Okay, so now here we can see the uh, Antutu 3D benchmarking rating came at 32.71 for the benchmarking result. Okay, so now we're here we're using the Andy Benchmark app to measure the uh, native and Java threads processing the device does. Uh, you can see here that it did 3,682 native threads and Java threads 143. Okay, so we uh, couldn't find a 4G spot that's where we record. Uh, so it's, you know, your, uh, being able to get on 3G or 4G is going to depend upon uh, you know where your location is so check for that in your area you can see here here's the speed test results we got using the 3G network from Sprint you can see our downloads and upload times I'm sure you get much better results when you're on the 4G system okay so here on the Motorola we can see the browser mark rightware.com score came in at 98,238 okay so here we have the Sun Spider Java score so uh, this tests the browser also on the uh, Motorola. It came in with a great score, 1872.1 milliseconds, and of course the lower score is the best to take and have. Okay, so camera-wise it has many of the same options you'd find on a uh, Android phone. Of course you do also have a camera shutter button up here to take pictures with. Shutter uh, action is a little slow we find. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit longer than what it's taking to shoot a shot. Um, we've kind of been interested in that. I mean right now it's got a field of vision but when you're moving around it can take a little bit of time to get the shot right uh, and it seems to fight to get focused. Um, it's a good camera. Of course you got what 8 megapixels on the back. Over here you have your ability to uh, go from front to back. Uh, your shutter button of course. Um, your uh, video to camcorder button. You of course have much of the same similar adjustments you can take it do. You can of course zoom in and out with the uh, with the uh, zoom in and out buttons, uh, you can see here that we've got in settings. You can do widescreen, uh, geotagging, storage location. Let's see what else we have. We have effects that you can take and do. Uh, we have scenes, 
setups that you can take in utilize modes that you can utilize single shot panorama multi-shot timer you can adjust the exposure you can use your flash etc etc um, so uh, one thing we did find like I said in live shooting is sometimes the shutter takes a little bit of time to focus and get the shot um, which was pretty interesting for us to take an experience um, the uh, shots are good and they definitely come in uh, with quality to them um, and uh, you can see here in some action shots we're trying to get these done you can see the video here A little heavy on the greens we noticed in, in the filming uh, and stuff like that. Now, uh, we did use it, and this is a complete darkness shot where we're in the complete dark and we're using the lamp video. Um, and it has an awesome lamp video. I mean, it really lights up the room. In fact, you can see the circular area on the wall um, where it really lights up an area really large. And uh, in our storeroom here, it's uh, it's got... Uh, it did a great job. Now, some of the colors, like I said, once again, you can see a lot of greens in here. The colors aren't as sharp on the uh, th uh, box that we like to use to see how well the colors come out. Um, and there's a lot of green in the room, but we have noticed that there's a lot of green being used in the shots. Now, one thing we weren't excited about, these were shots that were made with the camera with the flash. This is probably one of the better ones we got. It had a problem with focusing, flashing, and shuttering, uh, and taking the shot uh, in, within time and being able to focus and everything else. So these are the shots we got. These were all taken... Uh, where we took a shot and waited for the flash and the shutter and everybody to get along and, and shoot. Um, and the, the pictures are okay. They're not bad, but um, we're really excited. They, they, we seem to really struggle to get the shot off right. Um, it's a good camera. I mean, there's not much bad you can say about it, but it's a good camera. I mean, it, it definitely takes better photos than something is in the 5 megapixel range and other things. Um, we just we really would like a faster shutter was the one thing that we kind of noticed about it. But other than that, it's a good camera and should survive pretty well for you. Overall, we've been pretty impressed with the Motorola Photon uh, Q4G LTE. Uh, it's a pretty impressive little device and it rock and rolls. And the nice thing is it's got that beautiful keyboard in the back that you can take and uh, get access to. And of course, it's environmentally friendly for those of you who that's important to. And of course, it has... Uh, the latest when it comes to 4.04 uh, Android software on it. He'll probably, hopefully, we'll get a Jelly Bean update. You can always keep your fingers crossed. But uh, be sure to check it out. You can go to our friends at Sprint.com. That's Sprint.com. Tell them Chris Voss sent you. Uh, Chris Voss tested. Chris Voss approved. Uh, definitely look forward to more Sprint phones that we'll be reviewing in the future as they send them to us. Be sure to check back often and subscribe to the Chris Voss Show and the YouTube channels. Go pick yourself up one of these uh, little Motorola babies and rock and roll. And uh, make sure you tune in with it to see how we're doing with the latest phone reviews. Thanks for coming by.